In today's class, we will take a look at the interaction of a blast wave which is formed from an explosion, how it interacts with objects placed in the path of the blast wave. Like let us take this example, I, I form an explosion here, I form a blast wave which travels out with distance. This is the lead wave which is moving out as time increases it moves forward. And now if I place an object here, let us say I put an object here, how does the blast wave interact with the object? That is what I want to do. What happens literally is we will expect the some reflection here, some transmission here and I want to take a look at this problem. But to be able to do this problem, we go back to what we have done so far. We have looked at the problem of let us say I have an explosion at a particular place over here. I have the blast wave which moves out, that means it moves out with distance. Maybe at some time here, I am interested in putting an object here at this particular point. At this particular point, we have been able to calculate what is the type of the, if this is the ambient pressure, if this is the pressure behind the wave, we have been able to calculate P s minus P naught. We have been able to determine for strong blast assumption in the near field and in the far field wherein the blast becomes weakened, we have been able to get the over pressure which is P s minus P naught. We also tell ourselves at this particular point, maybe the blast comes at the time T a, therefore I have the time axis over here. At the time T a, till then the pressure is ambient. Then at the time T a, well I have the pressure jumping from P 0 to the value of P s, this is my P axis, that is my P axis is the time axis. And then, well the blast wave keeps pro propagating away and then what happens? The pressure falls, the pressure keeps falling and then it comes back and maybe reaches the P0 value. Therefore, I have a region of pressure which is in excess of ambient which contributes to a positive impulse and I have a region of let us say negative value which is over here which corresponds to negative impulse and I know how to calculate the at a particular point when I look at the wave traveling. I know how to calculate the positive and negative impulses. I also know how to calculate the over pressure. Now, when it interacts with an object placed in the path, well, I have to consider the reflected wave, I have to consider the pressure behind the reflected wave which is the actual pressure which is acting on the object and therefore, well, the problem becomes a little more complicated but still doable. Let us let's, let's try to see how to do that. Let, let me therefore go back to the example of the crater which we talked of in the last class. Well, you know we told ourselves, well I have the surface of the earth over here. We said, well I could have maybe a blast wave originating from the surface, maybe a buried explosive I could have. Well, I could also have an explosion which originates from a distance above the surface and then what happens? The, the blast wave propagates down, it propagates down, reaches the surface of the earth over here, maybe at some particular time over here. And now what is going to happen? Part of this wave which reaches is going to be transmitted into the earth, it gets further transmitted over here. But then you know at the surface, I have air over here, I have the earth over here, the earth could be loose sand, it could be rocky soil, it could be anything and depending on that, maybe what is going to happen is, maybe some part gets reflected over here. Therefore, I have something like a reflected wave from the initial thing which is propagating out with time. That means for increasing time, this is propagating out. And therefore, now I get a slightly different picture. Now, at this place, Originally, I calculated what is the over pressure from the side view. That means, at this particular point, now because of this surface and the reflected wave, the pressure here, that is the pressure behind the reflected wave will be quite high because it is to be expected because even if I consider something like a sound wave in which there is some velocity disturbance in which case, well, the velocity changes and therefore, the pressure gets doubled, I want to be able to calculate what is the reflected pressure. But then the problem is not so simple, it becomes even more complicated in the sense like if I have a surface over here, 
mind you I am not talking of the nature of the surface just taking a surface here I could have the blast wave which travels in this particular direction namely the blast comes like this and hits the surface or I could also have a blast wave which comes at an angle maybe the, the, the blast wave comes like this and hits the surface over here and when I have the blast wave coming in this direction I expect the blast wave to get reflected but this just does not follow the sign of what we have that like the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection because the condition which needs to be fulfilled is along the surface well the flow can take place only along the surface at the, at the interface and therefore what will happen is maybe I have a flow path like this maybe it bends it bends like this and the angle over here and the angle over here are not the same and this is what we call is a reflection of a blast wave from a particular surface. But then there is another problem if I have let us again sketch it out let us say I have the surface over here let us say this is normal well supposing the blast wave comes at grazing incidence at an angle which is less than let us say a large value say in practice is greater than around 40 degrees suppose the blast wave comes and hits the surface well what is going to happen I need to be able to get the boundary at the surface namely I should have maybe a velocity which goes along the surface because the that is the condition of the surface over here well after the wave the things must be in the same direction well it is not possible to have this condition when it is at grazing incidence and what happens is the, the incident wave gets raised off that means it gets pulled away and I have the incidence angle like this and I have the reflected one going like this and I have another shock which is formed over here which means when I have grazing incidence it is not possible for the condition at the surface to be met and therefore I have this getting lofted up and I have another shock here which we call as a Mark stem shock. Therefore, depending on how the blast wave comes and hits the surface well I could have reflected one which obeys the condition at the surface namely the, the, the velocity which is induced by the wave is has to be parallel to the surface at the surface or if I have grazing incidence well I have a secondary shock which is sort of normal to this particular surface I have the incident one over here I have the reflected one over here and therefore I have a three shock pattern something like a mark stem shock over here I have the reflected shock over here I have the incident shock over here and this is what is a mark stem the mark stem shock is quite strong and therefore I could have different configurations if I were to put it in this particular figure let me slightly change it because here it is like this when it is at an angle the, 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 the value will be something like this if it becomes at a grazing incidence over here at the surface well what could happen is I could have a sh I could have the incident shock like this I could have the reflected shock like this I could have a mark stem shock like this we have to consider these reflections also maybe we will summarize it tomorrow or in the next class and what we do today is let us take a look at what are the pressures which are formed behind the reflected wave we can immediately tell ourselves when we have these things happening in, in a direction which is not normal well the pressures will be less because you know only a component acts like this we should expect when I have a surface and supposing the wave comes normally in this case the reflected pressure will be higher therefore let us do the problem for the pressure behind the reflected wave and then go about conjecturing for the other cases and this is what I will get started with therefore the problem which we will consider is well I have a surface let us let us define the surface let us say I consider air over here this is some object which is placed I am looking at the surface of this particular object I am not going to take a look today at the transmitted wave into the surface all what I say is well a blast wave approaches the surface let us assume that it is planar let us also assume for the present that it is traveling at a Mach number ms therefore what is it I have ahead of the wave I have the pressure let us say the ambient pressure P0 I have the temperature T0 I have the density rho 0 and the velocity ahead is quiescent which is 0 meters per second 
and this particular wave which travels at Mach number process it reaches the surface and then what happens? Well, at the surface let us look at what is going to happen when it gets reflected. Then the wave gets reflected back. L let us assume I said it is travelling at Mach ms. Well, it gets reflected back and what does it do? It gets reflected, it travels in the opposite direction. Let us say it is the reflected wave, let us say msr. It is ms which is incident, msr is reflected and the medium in which it is getting reflected is not the quiescent medium, but it is the medium let us say p here, t here, rho here and the velocity behind a moving shock if this is m s and corresponding value is r s dot. In the frame of reference of the shock the velocity is u, therefore it is moving with the velocity r s minus u over here in this particular direction. Therefore, this reflected shock now moves in a medium which is at pressure p, which is at temperature t, which is at at density rho compared to p0, t0, rho0 over here and the medium is also moving in this direction that is it is the medium is moving it is quiescent no more it is moving at a distance r s dot minus u over here this is r s dot minus u. Therefore, what is the condition behind over here? Well, this is this shock is going to process this and therefore, the pressure is going to be the reflected pressure the temperature is going to be reflected, the density is going to be reflected and what should be the velocity behind this traveling wave? Well, at the wall it is the wall is stationary, it is rigid, it does not move therefore, the velocity at the wall should be 0 and therefore, we say that the velocity here is 0. Therefore, with these boundary conditions I have to determine what must be the type of pressure what I get and let us do this problem. You know the as long as we are clear about a problem maybe we can try to do it and as we do it maybe we will make some assumptions we will go back and see what the what how it is stated in in the case of hitting the objects with different angles a little later but for now let us take a look at this at this particular case let let's do a small numerical problem such that we are able to understand the physics of the problem let us say that the shock or the blast wave we model it as a constant pressure wave constant shock wave let us say it moves with a ms is equal to 10. Let the ambient pressure P0 be equal to 1 atmosphere that is 10 to the power 5 Pascal. Let the temperature be equal to 300 Kelvin. Once I know the temperature I know it is air the value of specific gas constant is equal to 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin and therefore, I can say that the speed of sound in this quiescent medium A0 is equal to under root gamma RT which is equal to at quiescent medium T0 which is equal to 1.4 into R is 287 into 300 Kelvin which comes out to be something like 347 meters per second. Therefore, I consider this incident shock at Mach number ms which is equal to 10 moving into this quiescent medium which has these particular properties. Therefore, what is the velocity of this particular shock? Therefore, r s dot Mach number is 10 into 347 which is equal to 3470 meters per second. Now, we have we have the shock moving at this velocity into this medium. I am interested in calculating pressure, temperature, density and the velocity with which the uh, uh, the particles follow the shock and therefore, now I, I calculate those values what is the value we know we have derived the value p by p 0 is equal to 2 gamma divided by gamma plus 1 into m s square minus gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1. Now, I substitute the values well we say Mach number is 10 the shock speed is 3470 meters per second and therefore, if I substitute it I get 2 into 1.4 divided by 2.4 into m s square is 100 minus 0 0.4 divided by 2.4 and this will work out to be equal to 116.7. That means, when the ambient pressure is equal to 1 atmosphere 
the pressure behind the incident shock is equal to 116.7 atmospheres. Let us now calculate in the frame of reference of the shock, that means shock stationary, I have u behind it, that means the shock is stationary, medium is moving at a speed r, what is the value of u, which is, which is what we, we, we put over here as equal to r dot minus u, I am interested in u over here. We know u over r s dot is equal to, we again look at what we derived earlier, gamma minus 1 plus 2 over m s square divided by gamma plus 1. m s is equal to 10 and compared to 1.4.4, this is 100, m s square is 100, this becomes 0.0, it is almost negligible. I can say it is equal to 1 over 6. And the value of density by rho naught, that is density ratio is equal to gamma plus 1 divided by this, it is just inverse from the mass balance equation, this is equal to 6. Now, I know the value of p by p naught, I know the value of rho by rho naught from the e equation of state for air which is equal to p is equal to rho r t, I get the value of t by t 0 as equal to I have p by p 0 into the value of rho 0 by rho and if I take this value 116.7 multiplied by rho 0 by rho is 6 which is equal to I get the value 116.7 divided by 6 and which, which equals 19.45. Therefore, let us let us put some of these values down over here. What is it I get? I get the value of the sound speed in the undisturbed medium before the incident shock comes over here is equal to 347 meters per second and the value of pressure, temperature and density behind the pressure is something like uh, compared to one atmosphere pressure, it is something like 116.7, the, the density is uh, 6 times the value of rho 0 over here. Well, the temperature, now I can put the value T by T naught is 19.45 and taking the temperature as 300 Kelvin, the value of T is equal to 300 Kelvin into 19.45 is, is the temperature which comes out to be 5835 Kelvin. That means the temperature is quite high. That means the temperature over here is high at a value around 5835 Kelvin. Now, this is for the incidence case. Now, what happens? The shock now travels at this particular speed which is equal to 3470 meters per second, hits the surface and gets reflected and into what medium does it move? It moves into this medium in which the pressure is high, the temperature is high at around 5835, the density is 6 times the original density and also the gases are moving towards this particular shock as it is moving ahead. What we derived so far is only for a quiescent gas, we have not considered the case wherein I have the medium in which the gas is moving and the shock is moving, we did this, but we can always transform the coordinates into shock stationary and do this. And therefore, let me consider the case wherein this reflected shock is moving into this particular medium. Let me sketch it out again such that we are able to get the reflected values, reflected pressure values. What do I mean by reflected pressure? The pressure behind the reflected shock. Therefore, again we draw the surface over here, well I have the reflected shock over here, this is travelling with let us say m s corresponding to reflected. What is the medium into which the shock is travelling? Well, we said that the pressure is high something like 116.7, we said that the temperature is high around 5800 5, or something, 5835 Kelvin. And you know, we also, yes, told ourselves it is moving with some velocity and this velocity with which it is moving is equal to the shock velocity, the original value of the shock velocity with which it was moving was equal to 3470 minus the particle velocity and what was the particle velocity? The particle velocity was u by r s is equal to 1 by 6, therefore the value of r s dot minus u is equal to 5 by 6 into 
is the velocity with which it is moving. Now, we know in this frame of reference it is somewhat difficult to do the problem. Let us make some simple assumptions. Let us assume, yes, I had the incident shock that is m s which was originally traveling at a speed of 3470 meters per second. What does it do? In the frame of reference of the shock, it pulled the particles with a velocity u and this velocity u is equal to 3470 divided by 6 and then what happens is it gets reflected from the surface and now when it gets reflected from the surface I must get 0 velocity here. Let us assume that it has to pull the uh, gas with the same velocity such that I, I, I get 0 velocity condition over here and since I am considering some of these shocks which are quite strong let me assume that the therefore the value of R s dot which is reflected will be same as R s dot which is incident. The value of R s dot in the reflected shock wave which is traveling in the opposite direction is same as the incident wave which is equal to I get 3, 4, 7, 0. In this case m s was equal to 10 not m s was r s dot is equal to 3, 4, 7, 0 meters per second. Now therefore, this shock is traveling in this medium whose temperature is, is equal to 5835. Yes, 5835 Kelvin. Therefore, I find well the shock is traveling at a velocity of 3470 meters per second into a medium whose temperature is high at this value and what is the sound speed of this medium? Well, A is equal to under root gamma RT which is equal to gamma is 1.4, R is equal to 287 into the temperature which is equal to 5835 and if I calculate this number the value of sound speed comes out to be equal to 1530 meters per second. If the sound speed into the medium into which the shock is traveling is 5835, well I can, I can also consider this therefore the Mach number of the shock is equal to the velocity that is 3470 divided by 1530 which is equal to 2.27. Well, if the shock is traveling at 2.27, what is the value of the reflected pressure? Well, let us put down here the condition is the reflected pressure, density is reflected, temperature is reflected, the sound speed in the reflected medium. What is the value of reflected to the value which is upstream which is p which is equal to 116.7 is equal to 2 gamma divided by gamma plus 1 into m s square that is 2.27 square minus gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 and if I substitute the value of gamma is equal to 1.4 in this particular expression I get the value of p r by p is equal to something like 6. In other words when I have the shock which is incident on the surface at a Mach number is equal to 10 and I want to calculate what is the pressure in the medium behind the reflected shock, I find that the pressure jumps up again by a factor 6. In other words, let us, let us put this down di diagrammatically. That means, I have the surface over here. Maybe let us say the in value of the initial pressure is P0 over here. This is the value of P0. I have when the incident shock is traveling, the pressure jump is equal to P, this is equal to something like 116 times the value of P0, this is the value of P which is 116 times P0 and then what happens this is traveling in this direction. When I have the reflection coming over here, this P jumps to a value around according to the calculation what you have done, it is something like 6P over here. And therefore, I find that the magnitude of the reflected pressure is something abnormally high, something like 6, six times or so the value of the incident pressure and therefore, I get phenomenally high pressures when the Mach number was equal to a high value. Let us do the same set of calculations for the case when m s is small, let us say when m s is equal to 1.5, since we have done this particular calculation, I can I can erase this and just 
repeat what are, what are the numbers we get. Let us see what is the magnitude of the reflected pressure. Therefore, now again I consider the surface over here. Let us quickly go through it. I have the incident shock traveling at a Mach number of 1.5. The conditions here are P0, rho 0, T0, it is quiescent. Well, the conditions here should be, let us let's, let's use a colored chalk over here, P, rho, T and the it has a given velocity over here. I use P by P0 with 1.5, I get the jump condition here as equal to P by P0 is 2.45 the value. If it is 1 atmosphere, it is 2.45 atmospheres. The value of rho is equal to 1.86 times the value of rho 0. The value of temperature, if this is 300, taking the, the this divided by this is equal to T by T naught, the, the temperature works out to be equal to 1.32 times the initial temperature and that multiplied by 300 is equal to 397 Kelvin. And now, what is going to happen? Well, at this surface, well the shock hits it and now I have the reflected shock which moves into this medium. Well, the properties of this medium are same, namely it is now 2.45 atmospheres. The density is equal to 1.86 times the initial density. The temperature here is equal to 397 and if it is 397, the sound speed in this medium compared to sound speed here which we said is gamma r t we call calculated as 347 meters per second. In this case, the value of A is equal to gamma 1.4 into specific gas constant 287 joules per kilogram Kelvin into 397 under root and this comes out to be 399 meters per second. Into this, this reflected shock is propagating and well the conditions here will be the reflected shock pressure, the density behind the reflected shock, temperature behind the reflected shock, sound speed behind the reflected shock. And now, if I want to calculate the value of PR and I use the same type of simplifications which we did earlier and what do we get? We get PR by the value of P1 over here that is P over here, this was equal to P0, this was P is equal to again I write 2 gamma, gamma plus 1 into m s square minus gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 and now I get the value of reflected pressure as equal to if I use this equation divided by P, I get it get the value as something like 1.82. I get the pressure rise be behind the reflected shock to be 1.82 times that what has been processed already and if I have a strong shock it is something like 6 times or so. But in the actual problem, if I now consider the actual problem, what is it I get? Well, I have the surface over here, I have the shock moving in this medium, let us say the medium is rho 0, the pressure is P0, temperature is T0, it is quiescent. The conditions behind this particular shock which let us say is moving at a value of ms is given by let us say p rho t and the sound speed is a o in this case, in this case it was a 0 and it has a particular velocity over here. What is the velocity? r s dot minus u and therefore, when, when at the surface the shock gets reflected and we have the reflected shock which is over here. The reflected shock is moving in this particular direction. The Mach number of the reflected shock is let us say m s reflected. The condition into which it is moving is these conditions namely p, let us let, write it down, it is equal to p rho t with sound, uh, sound velocity in the medium upstream of this reflected shock is a over here. It is also moving at a speed r s dot minus u. And what should be the condition here at the wall? The velocity must be 0, the, the condition here is PR, the condition is rho r, the condition is TR over here, the reflected is A0. It has been done by Kinney and Graham in his book on explosions in air. The expression what we get is, we get the expression for PR that is the reflected value 
divided by the pressure into which this reflected shock is moving as equal to 3 gamma minus 1 into the pressure into which this reflected shock is moving minus the ambient pressure into which the incident shock is moving into gamma minus 1 divided by the value of gamma minus 1 into the uh, shock which has been processed already by the incident shock that is the pressure plus I have P0 into gamma plus 1. That means the reflected the magnitude of the reflected pressure to the pressure which is which has got increased because of the uh, incident shock has processed the gases from P0 to P is given by 3 gamma minus 1 P minus P0 into gamma minus 1 divided by gamma minus 1 P plus P0 into gamma minus 1. In the limit of very strong shocks, what do you mean by strong shocks? We say well ms tends to infinity and if ms tends to infinity, well the value of P divided by P1 goes as ms square P tends to infinity. When P tends to infinity, well, what is it I will get over here? If I, if I were to simplify this expression, that means I, I, I have the condition of P tending to infinity. I take P over here, I get uh, 3 gamma minus 1 divided by P, P0 by P which gets 0. In the limit, I get 3 gamma minus 1 and I get P0 by P, P is tending to infinity. That means I have divided numerator and denominator by the value of P. I get gamma minus 1 which for air comes out to be 3 into 1.4 minus 1 divided by 1.4 minus 1 which is equal to 4.2 minus 1 3.2 divided by 0 0.4 which is 8 times. Therefore, what we did was just a feel you know we got a value around 6 in practice for a strong shock the value of the reflected shock pressure divided by the pressure uh, which is behind the incident shock is of the order of 8 times. We, we tell ourselves well I have been able to get the reflected shock pressure which is around 8 times, but you know in the problem we also had maybe the I have the incident shock it also gets transmitted into the medium into the medium uh, into the object and this transmitted shock also I need. To be able to get the value of the transmitted shock I need to do some more exercise. All what we have been able to do is we calculated the value of the reflected shock. How do I get the value of the transmitted shock? For this you know we have to do some more work. Let us let us try to figure out how to go about it. Let us consider a particular medium, let us say air and I also consider another medium over here, let us say a solid. Now all what I am interested is in maybe the blast wave comes over here, gets reflected. When it gets reflected, I have the reflected waves which are traveling in this particular direction. Also into this medium, I get the transmitted waves which are coming in. If the transmitted waves, if this solid is again going into the third medium, here I have the waves which are coming, well it will get reflected over here and the transmitted waves will still go further. That means I am I'm interested at this particular interface at which maybe the medium changes from air to a solid and I, I now know that if I consider the normal case of reflection. I am able to calculate the value of the pressure behind the P that is the reflected the pressure behind the reflected wave that is this is the incident wave, this is the reflected wave. I have this traveling at a speed let us say r s dot r, this is traveling at a speed let us say r s dot incident over here. I am able to calculate the pressure behind this, but I also want to know what is the type of Mach number which I have into the transmitted medium. To be able to do that, well, I, I need to have some more definitions and I define a quantity known as mechanical impedance. What is this mechanical impedance? 
you know we characterize a medium such as air, a solid or a liquid or any substance as, a, as having a mechanical impedance and I call this as Z. It is defined as maybe the pressure change in the medium divided associated with the equivalent velocity change in the medium. What is it I am talking of? Well, I have a medium, let us say air over here, I have some medium over here. Supposing a, a wave with a pressure delta p travels into it, you know the delta p also is associated with a particular delta u, the pressure change in the medium is associated with a equivalent velocity change in the medium and the ratio of the delta p divided by delta u is what I call as a mechanical impedance which some people also call as shock impedance. It is the shock impedance which tells us when the characteristic of one medium changes into some other medium, it is the impedance changes which tell us how much gets, gets transmitted, how much gets reflected because if I assume reflection, I am able to calculate the pressure, uh, pressure value over here. I would like to calculate the same thing on what is transmitted. Therefore, this shock impedance is something or mechanical impedance is something like electrical resistance which we define as equal to voltage divided by current. You know, current is similar to this voltage is equal to equivalent to pressure and equivalent to electrical resistance R, we define something like an impedance is at a shock impedance over here. In general, the, the value of the velocity may not be in phase, therefore impedance might be a complex number. But in the case of shock wherein we are considering the pressure changes and velocity changes, we just consider the value of impedance as it is, we do not consider it as a complex number. And therefore, let us try to see how this impedance, what, how, how, how it depends on the medium and whether I can, whether I can sort of uh, determine an expression for this particular impedance. Let us do that. Let us consider a, a, a case, any, any substance we take. Let us say a wave propagates into this particular medium. Let the wave propagate, let us say at the sound speed, maybe when the sound speed is high it travels into a medium whose pressure is P0, density is rho 0, let us say that the temperature is T0 and behind the medium in which it travels, the, the pressure slightly increases to P plus, let us say P prime, a small increment over here because I am talking in terms of a weak, weak wave which is A0. The density is equal to rho plus rho prime which is a small increment over here. Well, the temperature also changes slightly. And therefore, let us try to de determine from this whether I can determine the impedance which we calculated as e which we defined as equal to P prime divided by U prime that is the velocity changes associated with this. When a wave travels, it is a quiescent medium zero velocity ahead. I have a small disturbance in velocity U prime and this is the value of P prime by U prime. I want to calculate this value of z and therefore what I do? I write the mass balance, I write the momentum balance and try to see whether I can calculate the value of z. Let us write the mass balance. When I write the mass balance, you know what is it? The I cannot write when the wave is moving, therefore I keep the wave stationary. Let us also assume I am considering a unit surface area, that means my, my the height of the wave or the area of the wave is 1 meter square and therefore, if I keep the wave stationary, the medium which is at P0, rho 0, T0, quiescent moves towards me with a velocity A0, the, the sound speed here is A0 and the medium behind it now moves, it is moving with a velocity U0 following this, this is equal to A0 minus U prime over here. And the conditions of the medium here are same P0 plus P prime, it is equal to density is equal to rho 0 plus rho prime and the and I have taken the velocity here, let us say that a temperature is equal to T0 plus T prime. I want to write the mass balance 
and momentum balance equations. Let us write first write the mass balance equation. The mass balance equation is the mass flux which is coming that is per unit surface area is equal to rho 0 into A and mass which is leaving is the same as the mass which is entering which is equal to rho plus rho prime rho plus rho, rho 0 plus rho prime that is the density leaving into equal to a a 0 minus u which is the velocity which is leaving. And what is it let us solve this and uh, then go to the momentum equation. I get solving this I get rho 0 into mind you this is a which is approaching that means this is equal to a 0 that means I get rho 0 a 0 is equal to if I simplify this particular term I get rho 0 a 0 minus rho, rho, rho 0 u and this u is actually the velocity behind it that is it is equal to u prime over here because the velocity behind it is a 0 minus u prime then I get rho, rho prime into a 0 minus I have rho prime into u prime. Now, when I look at this expression this is a small quantity because I am talking writing for an acoustic wave u prime is again for an acoustic wave product of two small quantities I can neglect. I also have rho 0 and rho 0 a 0 and rho 0 a 0 which cancels off on both the sides and therefore, I get minus rho 0 u prime plus rho, rho prime into a 0 is equal to 0 or I get rho prime into a 0 is equal to rho 0 into u prime or rather I get rho prime is equal to rho 0 into u prime divided by a 0. This is one equation which I can get. I call this as equation 1 coming from mass balance. Now, I want to do the momentum balance. What is the momentum balance? Rate of change of momentum is equal to impressed force. I am talking unit surface area. Impressed force is equal to the pressure and therefore, the change in pressure is equal to right let us say momentum balance. The change in pressure is P prime and the change in momentum um, uh, rate of change of momentum the rate of change of mass that is mass flux is equal to a 0 that is in this frame of reference of the wave stationary a 0 into rho 0 is the mass which is approaching per unit area therefore, I am talking of force per unit area over here. The change of velocity is u prime and now the, the velocity changes therefore, the pressure is in the opposite direction therefore, I, 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 I get this as the expression or rather I get the value of p prime divided by u prime is equal to mind you here we must note the change in velocity is a 0 minus u prime minus a 0 which is equal to minus u prime therefore, the change of momentum is equal to a 0 rho 0 into minus u and therefore, p prime is equal to the change of momentum over here therefore, p prime by u prime is equal to a 0 into rho 0 over here. Now, if I were to call this as the momentum equation u prime and I go and substitute the value of u prime and therefore, u prime from this equation comes out to be equal to p prime divided by a 0 into rho 0 p prime divided by rho 0 and I substitute it over here what is it I get rho prime is equal to let us write it out rho 0 divided by a 0 into the value of p prime that is substitute the value over here a 0 into rho 0 over here and therefore, I get rho 0 and rho 0 gets cancelled I get rho prime divided by p prime is equal to 1 over a 0 square and this is what we have been telling you know d p by d rho is equal to a square or rather p prime by rho prime is equal to a 0 square. And now, let us let us use this equation and this equation 
into my impedance equation. Let us, let us do the last part of it. Therefore, what is it I get? I get the value of z that is the impedance which we define mechanical impedance z is equal to p prime divided by u prime. Therefore, I get the value of p prime from this equation as equal to let us put it down p prime is equal to rho prime into a 0 square u prime u prime from the mass balance equation. Let us write it out yes from u, u prime from mass balance equation is equal to rho 0 a 0 by rho 0. which is equal to a 0, a 0 gets cancelled, this gets cancelled, a 0 gets cancelled into a 0 and therefore, I get z is equal to rho 0 into a 0. Therefore, we get maybe when we consider the waves in the limit of being weak waves like we have sound waves, I get the impedance of the medium is equal to product of density of the medium into the sound speed in the medium. What does it really denote? See after all when we say impedance all what we are talking is something like p prime divided by by u prime and this z by u prime we are talking in terms of when I have the medium which is having some velocity disturbances what is the actual pressure disturbances which are associated with it and this is the way we have to look at the value of the impedance and what, what is the value let us calculate the value such that we, we, we can put some units onto it, we can also work with it. If you have to consider air, let us say for air rho 0 is equal to typically is equal to P 0 by R into T 0 that is uh, uh, P V is equal to M R T rho is equal to P by R T which is equal to P 0 is 10 to the power 5 Pascal, R is equal to 287, temperature is 300. Therefore, it will be something like 1.12 kilogram per meter cube is the value of the density of the air at atmospheric pressure. If I calculate the value of sound speed, we said sound speed is equal to under root gamma r into T0, which we saw in the previous problem was something like for a temperature of 300 Kelvin for air, it is equal to 347 meters per second. And therefore, the value of Z for air is typically equal to something like density is 1.12 into something like 347. Let us put the unit together kilogram per meter cube into meter per second. Something like we are talking of something like 1.12 means another 34 to it something like 380 kilogram meter per meter cube second. Now, this unit is little difficult to carry. Let us see whether we can simplify the unit and put it in some other form. Therefore, we say that the mechanical impedance of air can be written as something like approximately 380 kilogram meter divided by meter cube second. I write this as kilogram per meter square into kilogram meter per second square kilogram meter per second square then i'm i'm left with a second over here i'm left with a meter cube over here kilogram meter per second is newton and therefore i say z for air is approximately equal to 380 newton second by meter cube you have the impedance expressed in this particular units of newton second by meter cube and the impedance for air is so much. If I look at a solid, let let us say, like let us say, let us say consider water. What is the impedance of water? Let us calculate again. Well, the density of water is around 1000 kilogram per meter cube. We know that the sound speed in water is quite high because it is cohesive, molecules are nearby and they transmit the sound speed much higher. Let us say that the sound speed we will assume as equal to another let us say it is equal to of the order of 1000 meters per second, it is around 900 meters per second. Therefore, we say z for water is equal to density into something like sound speed in water which is equal to 
1000 which is of the order of 10 to the power 6 Newton second per meter cube. Therefore, we can have the impedances for different mediums put together and if we tell this we find that for air the impedance is of the order of let us say 400, for water it is around, around 10 to the power 6, for a substance like steel which reflects more it could be around if it is really a hard steel it could be around 10 to the power 7 and therefore, the, the problem which we consider is when, when we look at ref, interaction of let us say a blast wave with surfaces, we say yes I have one medium which has let us say medium A which has impedance is at A. I have another medium B which has impedance is at B. Now, I look at the interface between these two medium is given over here is the interface. I look at the wave as it is propagating in medium A which is characterized by impedance is at A. If the impedance of medium 2 is different from this, well you know it will it will tell us how much of the of this shock wave gets transmitted into it, how much of it gets reflected into it. Therefore, we characterize the medium to be able to solve the interaction problem of an object hitting the wave of an object being hit by a blast wave in terms of impedances. I will proceed with this in the next class and we will see well it is not that difficult after all we can find out after characterizing a medium in terms of its mechanical impedance we will be able to find out how much is what is the magnitude which is reflected what is the magnitude which gets transmitted. Therefore, in this class today we first took a look at a simplified way of determining when a blast wave is moving and it hits an object what is the magnitude of the reflected pressure if you considered a constant shock velocity. We found that when the shock speed is very high Mach number is very high the reflected value jumps to a value 8 times the shock pressure behind the incident that is the incident blast wave. That is if the over pressure of the blast wave is let us say 20, the reflected pressure is something like 160 times, 160 atmospheres. If the it is 8 times the value. If the blast wave is weak, well it is only twice the value. And then we were looking at the how to characterize a medium to be able to find out how much gets transmitted into the medium and how much is reflected back into the original medium and this is what we do in the next class. Well, thank you then.